today we're going to talk about life tables. And life tables are very important for ecology because they give important information regarding demography. And demography is the way a population reproduces and grows over time. So we're talking about um, growth rate, which we'll talk about later. But here when we talk about life tables, I'm going to be talking a lot about uh, how and when individuals die in a population and the trends that we see regarding death and when the population reproduces and the trends that we see with how that how individuals reproduce. And those two things come together and we can see them visually in a life table. So let's start off, let's start off with death, right? Um, we can visualize death through these survivorship curves. Survivorship curves tell us how a population survives over time, or in a little more morbid way, the way a population dies. If you look at the graph, um, the x-axis is percentage of maximum life expectancy. So we're not comparing years in humans to days in flies. Everybody is being compared equally, which is the percentage of the maximum life expectancy. So if humans live, that uh, expectancy is around 70 years, uh, that would be 100% at the x-axis. And if we were to compare that to a fly, the 100 would then be like three years. But at the bottom, it's still 100. We're looking at 100%. What are the chances that the organism is able to survive through its life expectancy? What are the chances that it dies before its body would die? So uh, that it would die prematurely. And there's three things that we see, three big trends that we see, or three uh, types. The first one is that is called type one, and that's what we are, so it should be the most easy for us to remember. And that is you have a very low death at young age. You're more likely to die at old age once you've hit that life expectancy. So a lot of the organisms that we interact with, um, your pets, cats, dogs, a lot of mammals have type one survivorship and that they most likely will survive to the maximum of their life expectancy. Type two is a constant death rate. So what you see is you see individuals, this, they have the same chance of dying early in life, middle of life, end of life. The chance of them dying is, is the same. It's consistent throughout their, throughout their life. Um, and then type three is there's a high death at young age. And then if you survive young age, most likely you are going to survive all the way to, to your maximum 100% life expectancy, but the majority of organisms don't. So we see that a lot. Um, I think one of our students looked up and he said that fruit flies are type three. There's a high death at young age. A lot of trees are like this, plants are like this. They produce so many seeds, but not many of those seeds are actually able to germinate reproduce, germinate, um, and then grow into a seedling, which then can grow into a tree. So you have a lot dying um, at the very beginning. So type one, few deaths at the beginning, um, most likely you're gonna live to your 100% uh, life expectancy. Type three is the opposite. You have a, you most likely you're not going to survive. Um, there's a high chance that you will die before um, at a very young age, and then a constant death rate, which is that your, your chance of you dying are equal across your whole life. So those are the difference between type one, type two, and type three. So <clears throat> the way a population reproduces or the way individuals within a population reproduces is also really important for life tables. There's two main methods of reproduction, semiparity and iteroparity. Semiparity is you reproduce one time and that's it. So hopefully you survive to reproduce and then you have one shot. So this past summer we saw um, the 18 year cycle of the cicadas. So those cicadas were juvenile, they were living underground, they emerged after being underground for 18 years. They have one big reproductive bout where everybody reproduces and then once they reproduce, they die. They do not continue to survive, so they reproduce and then they die. That's called semel parity. And semel parity is more common in an uncertain environment. So basically they're saving up all their resources until the environmental conditions are just 
exactly right. And we actually saw that cicadas are waiting for certain environmental triggers uh, for them to come out from underground and reproduce. So seminal parity in very uncertain environments, once those environmental conditions are uh, appropriate for reproduction, they all reproduce and then they all die. What we're more comfortable with is called iteroparity. And this is selected for usually in a stable environment. When year to year, you can you will have conditions um, for reproduction. You are certain you're probably certain that there will be water, there will be resources enough for you to reproduce and support yourself and support your offspring. So we have iteroparity in very stable environments, and that's multiple reproductive um, events over the course of your life. So humans are iteroparous. <laughs> I was giving cicadas as an example of semilparis, but the picture was a palm, there was a palm tree that reproduces one time called Carypha, and, um, and then those are salmon. Okay, so all of this information comes together and forms a life table. And a life table is broken up into cohorts, or age, or year, or they can do it by like <clears throat> groups. Um, so age in years here is X, sorry. is x <clears throat> and so age here this is from year zero to one from one to two two to three three to four those are our cohorts our intervals and here this is the observed number of birds alive that's n x so that's n the number of birds observed at interval x so 115 birds are alive at the year zero and then all 25 birds are alive at year one 19 birds are alive at year two 12 birds are alive at year three two birds are alive at year four one bird alive at year five the next column over is the proportion surviving so if you are born then you are alive so we have a hundred percent survival 1.0 proportion surviving but then once we get to year one, the proportion surviving at the start is 0.217. So we have a pretty big uh, death rate there. So L sub X, so this is, um, is the proportion surviving at the start of that interval. So number of individuals alive at year one over number of individuals alive at year zero. That's our proportion surviving at the start of the interval. So 0.165 is 19 which is the number of individuals alive at year two over 115, number of individuals alive at year zero. And so you, go, you can go all the way down and do that. If we look here for year five, our proportion surviving at the start of interval year five, that would be N five, which is one over N year zero, which is 115. <clears throat> the number that die is this, it's your, <clears throat> your, oh, that should be an over. And at that interval over the end of the next interval. So that's how you figure out the proportion that are dying. And then the rate of mortality is the number that are dead, that die over the number that you started with. So this is 90 over 115. Um, if we look at this next one for year one, QX, which is our rate of mortality for year one. It's dx, which is our number that died in year one, which is six, divided by nx, which is 25. So let's look at one of these tables. Um, this is the life table of a grasshopper. Here we don't see it in terms of years. Um, we see it by cohort. And so this ecologist has grouped together um, the different cohorts based on like what reproductive stage they're in, what life stage they're in. So you can be an egg, an instar, your four different instars, which are basically your um, larva before you get to an adult uh, of grasshopper. So if we look here, they're using slightly different um, num um, variable, uh, like letters that represent the variables, but it's all the same. So the number observed at the start of each stage this is AX. So we start with 44,000 eggs. The proportion of original cohort surviving, L sub X, that's the same. That's one. So if they're an egg, they're staying an egg. And the proportion that die, that's our D sub X. And that's 0.92. So 90, over 90% 90 of the eggs that are laid don't make it to the next stage. <clears throat> and then if you look, 
basically it it's a really really after that um if you survive you're gonna persist so immediately you should be thinking type three survivorship curve your chance of death is very high at a young age and then if you get past that young age you have a very low chance of death um and that you can also see that here in our in our mortality rate let's look at one more uh, this is the life table of a red deer. So here, this no longer is in that cohort, but we're doing it based on years, 1 through 16. And we can see that there is a very low death rate early on, and then that mortality rate spikes about midway through life and then increases. So this isn't as clear cut, um, um, but to me, I would, I would probably say because there's such a low death rate at the start um, that it's probably a type a type one survivorship curve. Um, but all these variables are the same as the ones that I showed you initially, and that is how you read um, life tables.